how do you differentiate between, let's say, accepting where you are and um, what's possible for you? So acceptance, if, if you were a pessimist, let's say, you might accept that things are perhaps worse than they actually are. Whereas if you are too much of an optimist, you might try and glamorize something to, I don't know, kid yourself that things are better than they are. How do you differentiate those two? Yeah, and you know, this is interesting. In my own marriage, I have both sides. My, my wife is tremendously naturally optimistic and I'm more of a critical thinker and see the gaps in the hole. So I've lived that now for 38 years and have experience with firsthand seeing both. And of course, in business, you see both. But I would say to those that are naturally um, uh, more critical thinking, the skill of gratitude is your best friend. That if you're a critical thinker, always see the holes and the gaps, good for you. That's a strength. But the counter side of that is also a shadow. So how you build your shadow side of that strength is to, to make a deliberate, like I do every day in my continuous improvement journal, I start on one page about what are the gratitudes and learnings from yesterday. And that's another key too, right? Because everything's not just rosy. So what's, what am I grateful for? Everything from the weather to your house to something positive that happened to business or in your life or relationships yesterday, but also the key word in there is learning. So what did I learn from any of the setbacks? Nelson Mandela, one of my heroes, the president of South Africa, was in prison for 29 years in Robben Island. I lived in South Africa for two years, so that's one of the reasons I'm passionate about his story. But he said something very profound, and this is the man that was incarcerated for 29 years. He says, I never lose, I either win or learn. And I think there uh, has some nuggets of truth for you in your question. You know, you're either winning and you're grateful and you focus on what you have or you're learning. If you're not winning and you have to be realistic, you, you know, if I'm not winning, how do I get in that mindset of accepting where I'm at, not blaming? Because if you're still blaming your boss or your spouse or your parents or somebody else in your life, you're not at a position, whether you're a critical thinker or a Pollyanna thinker, you're not in a position to move on and change. And so, I love that approach by Nelson Mandela that I'm either winning or learning. I'm either grateful or I'm in learning mode. And in learning mode, I have to first accept my situation. And that doesn't mean accept if, you know, if you're in a very bad abusive situation, that doesn't mean accept that. That means, you know, get out of there. And now how can I continue to grow and learn as an individual or as a business professional? But so please don't hear in that word acceptance. That's about, you know, I'm in a very abusive situation I need to stay not at all that means you know wherever I'm at when I'm in a safe position now how can I learn how can I not be a victim of my past and now learn get in a position of gratitude and learning and so I think if we can get our mindset set on both of those paradigms at the same time whether you're a optimist or a, a deeply critical thinker it'll it'll balance you off and get you in a position because my passion Thomas is happiness and productivity, happiness, and success. I know lots of successful people at, at 59 and three quarter years old, lots of successful people that aren't happy. And they are very productive, they've got lots of money, and they're not happy. So mm. my passion in my business, and, and I always end my blogs or podcasts or writings or my website with the idea of live a life of sustainable continuous improvement. So that I'm not looking for you know, uh, four years you, uh, and you can make lots of money and then it's happily ever after. I mean, how do we build those happiness and, and productive, successful practices and habits in our lives so that we can enjoy 80 years of happiness, high productivity and success? That's my real vision and goal at this end. I might not have been able to say that, say that at 26 when I first developed purpose, but uh, certainly now I can see that. And that's my message to people is that you know, don't wake up one day and you've made lots of money and you're unhappy and you don't have the relationships and love in your life that you need. So my, when I talk about goal setting and I'm talking about how, how can we do it for financial, spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, all those areas and be successful in each one of those areas. And, and therefore we can, you know, find both success and happiness. Your answer made me think of a, um, a Tony Robbins quote um, 
uh, when you spoke about acceptance and I thought your explanation made me think of um, see things as they are, but